Hi everyone, Dan Tyler here again. I hope you're all doing very, very well. Um, this week I was going to bring you a video on uh, cable. Um, I've already done the analysis on it um, and picked out some important key levels. I just thought it would be good to share with you guys how I came about this and show you my, my thought process along the way really. Um, I've already put in uh, chart patterns like channels and stuff um, already in the time frames just to save a little bit of time because there is quite a bit that I want to explain so it might be a bit of a longer video than usual but we'll, we'll see. Let's crack on. Um, as always we start off with the higher time frames so looking at the weekly time frame for cable for GBP USD you can see that we have been in a descending channel for the past few years. It's around 2013 time. And it's really, really, we can see some really, really nice reactions down uh, along the way. In most recent weeks, we've actually seen um, price come and reject off of, let's center a bit, off of this um, channel resistance here. Had a really, really nice rejection and a lot of bearish sentiment in the market heading towards this channel support line. So with this being the highest channel resistance, I mean, it hasn't touched this channel resistance for a good few years. If we just take a zoom out again, we can see that it's only been touched three times since 2016, uh, 2006, sorry. And the fact that we got a really, really clean rejection off of this channel resistance here kind of gives me an indication that um, maybe the the market popped out here maybe that's the highest we're going to go for a while we could equal it um, but i think that's the highest we're going to go for a while we could see some downside some downside movement um, the reason why i think this also is we've had the rejection off the channel resistance come straight down to channel support and we've had multiple rejections off of this channel support Although this suggests evidence of its strength, the fact that we've had two strong uh, green candles, I'd like to see more green candles after this, to be honest. And then all of a sudden, we've had a red candle pop up in the middle of nowhere. And what this is suggesting is, is that there's essentially some bearish sentiment coming into the market again. The sellers were in control. The buyers tried to battle it off. They won for a little bit and now the sellers are coming back into control and trying to push the market down again. So I think that um, although there will be some movement for a little bit of a move up, we can see the sellers coming into control and we could see some downside movement going down to some lower levels targeting maybe um, these lows, these ones, or, or even as far as these ones, but we shall see. Um, that's just looking at the channel, uh, the channel lines and also the candlesticks. However, we'll put in our support and resistance lines for the weekly time frame. Um, this will give us a good idea on um, where institutions and banks are buying and selling this currency. So we can actually see here, this is a uh, great confluence in a way that um, cable absolutely loves to be stuck in this range. Um, as you can see here, and it's something that Andy has clarified in the, the Q&A sessions before, and we are still in that. Um, something that you can add to this when we're in a ranging market is the stochastic. I am a big fan of the stochastic in a ranging market. I think it gives very, very reliable signals to buy or sell. So it's something that I do use, especially on higher time frames as well. And something to note. Um, in my opinion, for the stochastic to give you a genuine and sufficient buy or sell signal, the percentage D and the percentage K need to cross over in these overbought or oversold zones. So you can see that occasionally the market does go into the overbought or the oversold zones, but they, the lines don't cross over. What I always look for is I look for a crossover in that zone to give us a good signal to buy or sell and it cuts out a lot of the noise so you can see here for example um, if we're looking at uh, the market being overbought we had a sell signal there the market did go down we the market went into overbought but did not cross in the over um in the overbought section so 
Although the market did go down, it shot straight back up again. Same here, market didn't really go down at all, it's just consolidated. Same here, and that's really about it. And then we got to this level up here, where we had a really, really nice, clean, overbought section, crossover um, in the over overbought zone, and had a really nice, big, bearish week that week. Then when we move down into the oversold area here, we can see that we got extended into the over um, the oversold area here, but there was no crossover. Um, for me, this is just noise in the market at the moment. That was just noise in the market, and that's why I didn't enter along um, on this position. However, um, the fact that we've had this bearish candle pop up gives me the indication that we could be heading back down into this oversold area which shows that the market is going down at least to these levels, which would be really, really nice to see. So then doing a bit more investigative work on the daily, you can see that we have been in an ascending channel on the daily. Um, so on this, uh, I just want to see um, whether we are in any FIB cycles, uh, whether any cycles are completed, you know, key support and resistance zones, just to see where the best uh, point on this chart is to potentially um, short the market. So with that in mind, something I'd like to instantly do is just put in um, the upwards Fibonacci, uh, the upwards Fibonacci, just to see if we are, um, uh, sorry, the the down downwards Fibonacci. Although we are in a um, an ascending triangle, we have to remember that I think the market topped out around this area. If the market topped out around this area, we're going to be looking for some down cycles towards the D extension. So with that in mind, I'm going to put down the uh, put on the down Fibonacci's on this one, actually. Just bear with me just while I put the manual ones in. And then we'll see what that pops up with. <coughs> Excuse me. Perfect. So we are in a FIB cycle at the moment, and we have had the D uh, the C confirmed here. However, what I'd really like to see, if I'm honest, is I'd really like to see maybe the market come up to these sorts of levels here. And the reason why I wanted to pull back to this 61.8% um, exhibit uh, the pullback is because the channel line seems to be um, being respected. This channel support here. Um, has acted very, very strongly. And it looks like we're coming to this sort of area again. So we may see a rejection off this area for a further pull up, a uh, further push up, sorry, to around this area here, which is a lovely point of confluence to potentially short. So we're looking at around the uh, 1.3 watt, the 1.3151 maybe. That'll be a good point to start, but you have to realise that on higher time frames, these um, these levels will be slightly more inaccurate from when you're looking at the lower time frames. So it's certainly worth something to investigate on whether we are looking to have that push that push up towards this level to then short it and get in at um, at the best price really. So just something else to confirm. We're looking for the market to, yes, OK, have a short term push up maybe to around these levels. But is it realistic that the market is going to reach this D extension around here? So the D extension is around the 123.70. So we'll look on the weekly, just see if the 123.70 is actually a realistic target to go for. So we're looking at around, I'll actually pop it in here. One twenty three seventy. So that's where the the fib extension is looking for us to go. So we could actually see a break of um, this institutional level here, a nice retest, and maybe going down towards the the Fibonacci extension. It's certainly possible. However, we do have to keep in mind that this is a strong range for cable. It does like ranging within this area. So we, we it, there may be a bounce around these areas, but there is room for still some um, some downside movement. So with that in mind, we can see that we're looking for maybe a um, 
uh, golden ratio pullback to around this channel line, which is per which will be perfect confluence for a further push down to the market. You know, targeting these lows around here um, would be absolutely perfect. I'll just take that off just for um, just to make it a bit neater, but it'll be great just to target those lows. So then we can go down into the four hourly, and this is the last chart that I'll focus on. The hourly um, I use simply um, now just for just for entries, um, maybe an indicator just to give me a, a signal to, to to take the trade essentially. So when we go down into the four hour, you can see again that we are in this ascending channel, and again um, it's basically the same as the daily, but um, a little bit smaller. And you can see that again it's being respected, respected, and we've had multiple rejections around here um, with the multiple rejections being around this area it's telling me that this level is strong and potentially the market could be looking to push up just that little bit further um, which would be great to see so with that in mind again i'll put in the up fibonacci's this time as we are looking for that that slight movement up so we'll see if there is a fib cycle that needs to be completed so with this in mind, we've pulled back to the um, the yellow level here. So therefore, we are looking at the yellow target. And this gives us great indication and great confluence that the market um, may be looking to actually push up to these sorts of areas around here. Because this is what we call a really, really good fade zone. The 200 is a very good area for um, the market to reverse, as Andy has explained in um, multiple Q&A sessions um, and something that um, he has back tested quite religiously. Um, but with this in mind, we can see that um, the 200 is around this level and the this is a really, really nice fade zone for the market to push up to and, and, and reverse, essentially. So with this in mind, we'll take this and this level is around the 3156. So just to confirm, if we put our line around the 3156. Just for the sake of it, we'll put it down to the 3150. And it's perfectly confluenced with that that 61.8% FIB pullback and that channel line there. So with the four hour, we can see that we've got these multiple rejections. The market is looking to potentially have that last push up to get in, uh, uh, to get to this price around the 200 level. Again, you might see overextensions to around um, this area potentially, but I think it, it could be unlikely if I'm honest. So the fact that we're, we've got this reversal zone here, zone here just gives me the indication that this is a great price to get in at shorting cable. Um, it's certainly something that I'm doing. And as soon as the market opens, I'll be getting a limit order around the um, 1.3150 level um, to short it, uh, as it looks like we've got quite a nice bit of room for, for movement on the downside. So with, with that in mind, guys, um, I hope that helps. I hope it wasn't too confusing for you. And uh, I hope it um, it clarifies my thoughts around cable. Please feel free to um, drop me a message, uh, give any feedback on these videos if possible, because it, it's something that we are looking to, you know, Im improve on. And I'm, uh, I would like to know if um, if this has helped you or if there's anything that I can improve on, essentially. Um, so, yeah, please give your feedback, please. Um, Make sure you're posting on the Facebook group. I can see loads of you are doing very, very well. But in the meantime, I hope you have a really, really good week. Um, and I'll speak to you guys very, very soon. Thank you very much. Bye bye.